Morning, church. How are you all? Morning, church. How are you all? Great to see you this morning. Hey, just where you stand, why don't you just lift your hands to God. Let's just pray before we get into the Word of God this morning. Father God, you're awesome and we love you. We count it a privilege to be in your house this morning. And Father God, to you be all the glory and all the honor. We lift our hands and our hearts. We open up our spirit to receive from you this morning. Father God, we know your word is powerful and we honor it this morning. We know that through the power of your Holy Spirit, only you have the ability to give us revelation to give us understanding, to change our lives and transform us forever. So Father, this morning, with hands lifted up, we say, have your way in our hearts and lives. Have your way in our church, in our city, in our region. Have your way in our nation, Lord God. Do a work in and through us this morning. In your power and your authority, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Give someone a high five as you grab your seat this morning. Thanks, team. Brilliant. Great to see you all this morning, and uh, if you weren't here last week, we're, uh, we're not moving out of church, we're not getting the boxes ready to shift somewhere else. Uh, this is our new series called The New Normal, and uh, last week, Pastor Glenn uh, launched our new series, New Normal, and in such a powerful way, ushering in uh, what this next season now looks like for us as a church, what the new normal is in all of our lives looks like because uh, we've been given an incredible call as a church, not just to our city, not just to our region or the nation, but to the nations. And there's a lot of new normals that we need to establish in our own lives because whilst it's a great corporate call that we've been drawn into, that's been spoken over our lives, there's a personal application for each and every one of us that we wanna develop some new normals, some new understandings of how we outwork that and how we walk that out. I want to just say hello on behalf of Pastor Glenn and uh, Pastor Soph. They are uh, away this weekend. Pastor Glenn is in New Zealand at Arise Church with Pastor John and Jillian Cameron. And he's having a great time there uh, connecting with our good friends there at Arise Church. And uh, Pastor Soph is with uh, other friends of our house at Net Church, uh, Pastors Roy and Keeley at Net Church in Kent. So she's down there with JD and Georgia for this weekend ministering down there. Isn't it great that we're affecting churches right around the globe. Isn't it great that we're released, releasing our senior pastors to be that, that mandate and that call and see uh, the life of who we are established right around the globe. It's a powerful thing. You're a part of that. If, you, if you're watching on stream this morning, I want to say a big hello to you wherever you are around the world. We've got people uh, tuning in, uh, going online and logging in uh, via the app and via the web every single week from right around the world, from uh, all nations, all continents around the globe, and it's great to have you with us this morning. And uh, I'm just really believing that this new series, The New Normal, isn't just going to be some good teaching that we uh, inspires us in a moment, but actually sets a new foundation for all of us. Something that we, we don't just go, well, that, that was great, that explains a few things, but something that we actually buy into in a greater way to actually uh, take on as our personal responsibility in this next season. A, a, a new normal, a new normal, a new way of, of living, a new way of thinking. Not, not the things that we take for granted, not, not a new normal of familiarity, not a new normal of, oh, well, this is just the way we do things now. Not a, not a taking for granted, but a, a new normal in this is just what we expect in every area. A new normal of, of what we believe, a new normal of, of what is normal every day, both practice and expectation of what God can do in our lives. A new normal that sets a new bar, a new standard for for what we can allow God to function and do in our lives. Just as Pastor Paul's already said this morning, it's, it's a powerful thing to think that we can open up or limit what the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, does in our life. It's not like we limit God. We're, no one can limit God. He's limitless. But we can actually limit the power, the outworking power of God working in and through. We limit Him by our, our choice to say, God, use me. God, work through me. God, bless others in my life as a result of me following after you. It's a new normal. I want to share with you this morning the time that we have 
uh, that it's normal to be powerful. Normal to be powerful. Normal to be, be powerful as a Christian. Normal to be powerful as a, a son and a daughter of God. Normal to be powerful as a church. A lot of people can, uh, have said power is something that corrupts. I'm not talking about the power that corrupts. I'm, I'm talking about the power that represents things like favor, authority, dominion, eternity, fullness, victory. If you've got your Bibles with you this morning, why don't you turn to Ephesians chapter 1, and verse 18. It's going to come up on the screens if you don't have a Bible here this morning so you can follow along. Ephesians 1, verse 18. I want to establish for you this morning out of the Bible, out of our, our authority of how we understand God, how we, we know God, out of the Word of God, this power that we're talking about, this new normal that it's normal to be powerful. Verse 18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the almighty, as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. And every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. What an incredible What an incredible description of what it is to know the power of God. Incredible illustration for us in what that power encompasses when we talk about favor, we're talking about an inheritance, an inheritance of God, a power given by God to us. An inheritance is a wonderful thing because it actually establishes not only the promise of what we, what we have access to. But inheritance speaks about our identity in Him. You see, an inheritance only goes to the family. It only goes to the ones who are a part of the family name. An inheritance goes to those who are sons and daughters. So when we're promised in His power, an inheritance, a favor in that place. It's, it's not just a, 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 a tip or a little credit to us. It's actually establishing us in the understanding of our identity that our favor, our inheritance is something of power that establishes our identity. The authority of God given, the dominion, which means there's a, there's a place to reign in power. That when the power of God, the resurrection power of God is established, we get an ability not just to get by, we have an ability to reign, to rule, that, that Jesus Christ and His resurrection power has given us that that there's eternity in this. That it's not just a getting by in a season, it's not even a getting by in the next season. That this power that we have is actually an eternal power. It's a power for all eternity. And there's a fullness that comes from that. And there's a victory that we walk in that. A victory that's already been accomplished. You see, this resurrection power this morning, if if you don't understand what that term means or what that word resurrection means, let me just... Spell it out for you very quickly. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, walked the earth given by God the Father to all mankind. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came. And in righteousness, He took the sin of the world. He took everything that, that mankind had separated themselves from God by. All of our failings, all of our shame, all of our guilt. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took that in His righteousness put it in a grave. He took it on himself as the righteous one, the only righteous one, the son of God. He took it to a grave and he he left it there dead and buried forever. And he rose again in what we call resurrection power. There was a resurrection from the grave of what we read about there in Ephesians where Jesus Christ was taken up and placed in a place of authority at the right hand of God where he reigns even today. He is alive. We we serve a risen Savior. And in that resurrection power, Jesus Christ then gave us 
the authority, the dominion, the fullness, the victory, the power, that same, as it says in Ephesians, that same power that raised Christ from the dead, that's ours. So our new normal in a new era, as we step into the newness of this next season, we need to understand it's normal to be powerful. And not just, not, not just powerful in a title or a position, we're powerful in our identity that Jesus Christ in his resurrection power has given us a power to walk in, a resurrection power to live in, a resurrection authority not to wield around like a stick over people or over situations necessarily. It's a, it's a, an, a power and authority that we carry in our, our identity that we understand no matter what we face, no matter what comes against us, no matter what's been before, we've already been given the victory. This resurrection power, we, we understand as we step into a new season and new seasons, new era, as it's been prophesied over us as a church, this new era, every, we all handle change differently. Uh, everyone handles change differently. Me, uh, I'm one that I love change. I get bored in the, in the mundane. There's certain things, everyone's got the certain things that they they are creatures of habit with. I, there's a few things I'm a creature of habit with that I like just a certain way. Uh, and if it's not a certain way, it's not the way I, I like it, then I, I get a little upset. But we all handle change differently. We all function with change differently. In a new era, it's kind of like when you're moving house. I know there's a few of us uh, in church at the moment who've just been through the process of moving house and, and packing everything up, putting everything into boxes and, and, and going through the process of Moving, And whilst there's an excitement about moving to a new house and going into a new place, uh, shifting up and moving into a new era as a family, as a couple, as an individual, as you move into the newness of a new environment, it, there, there's some excitement, but there's also a lot of anxieties that go, there's a lot of frustrations that go, there's a lot of things to, to adapt to and to take on board as we step into this new era, as we, we walk in to this new era, we need to understand we, we walk in a new normal of power. We walk in a, a new normal of power that we need to understand it, it isn't just going to happen by itself, that there's an application to that power. There's an application to applying ourselves to this new era that will determine whether or not we function in power or not, or whether we just function in the frustrations and the anxieties of being stretched to step into a new era, to be part of a new era, to find out where our place is in this new era, what we look like and what our new function is in this new era. It's an incredibly difficult thing for some people to actually lose all the identity, all of the, the function, all of the, the roles, even let go of and walk from uh, all of the, the great old memories of an old era and move into a new era. It's a, it can be a troubling thing for some people, but understand that if you don't apply yourself in the right way to the new era, then there's, there's a power that's lacking. There's a strength that will, that will leave you and, and exhaust you in the processes of the frustrations and the anxieties and, and all the change and the shifts. But there's a power that we can walk in. There's a power that we can have, this redemption work of Jesus Christ, that is ours if we'll apply ourselves. Let me talk to you about that application just a second. If you want to turn your Bible to Matthew chapter nine. Jesus Christ, as I, as I mentioned, came as a man, holy God, son of God. Came as a man and, and in, even though the Jewish people had read about for, for centuries the prophetic words of Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, the one who was gonna restore all authority and all righteousness for the people of God, they were believing for it. They'd, they'd read the prophecies in, in Tabernacle over and over and over again. They'd been raised on the incredible work of God through their ancestors and believing for this day of the Messiah. And Jesus Christ comes and ushers in a new era. Jesus Christ comes and, and starts to function in a way in this new era that's foreign to them. They start questioning him on things like uh, fasting, and, and the, the law that they'd functioned under, the, the behaviors and the, the traditions that they'd functioned under, that it looked like Jesus was just completely ignoring. They were getting upset with him because there was all of these things that they held dear to their culture and their upbringing, the things that they held 
very personally in their hearts and they, they would challenge Jesus on it and, and understand as they did this, as they failed to apply themselves correctly to this new era, there was a power lacking in their lives. So all they ended up walking in was frustration, confusion, a lack of identity, and missing the very one that they were holding on for in the Messiah. They missed Jesus because of a lack of application to the new era. We read here in, in, cha in chapter 9, thank you, of Matthew. Jesus says these words in verse 16. No one sews a patch of new cloth on an old garment, but the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. See, in this new era, we can't expect to be able to apply aspects of this new era like a patch. <laughs> like, I'll apply this part of the new era here, and I'll apply that part of the new, to, to the old ways that I did things, and the old the old style of stuff and to my old thinking and I'll just apply this new patch of things. I like that, then I'll, I'll apply this aspect of the new era here. And Jesus says no one does that because the, the new and the old, when they're attached together, there's a tearing. We, we can't expect to apply ourselves to a new era in patch form, to think that, that it's even God's heart, that it's even the heart of God in resurrection power that he would represent himself like a patch-up job. A new era isn't a patch-up job, church. A new era isn't just something we choose in bits and pieces to apply here and apply there and think that we're going to walk in any authority. There's an acceptance of a new era that's a whole new garment. It's a whole new way. Not patching. God's not interested in just patching things up. You see, the resurrection power was a promise of new life. It's a newness not just a fixing up. As Jesus Christ went on to say, there's a, a pouring in of new wine if you pour it into old wineskins. You see, God's, God's not about in this new era just pouring all the newness and all the fullness and all the authority and all the dominion, all the power that goes with this new era into what you carried in the last one. You see, even in the emptying out of yourself to accept a new era, if you, you think that you're going to be able to contain all the new things of God, all the new aspects of the new era, in what held in your life the old stuff, it's not going to hold. The things that we held, that held us, the things that, that we felt like were the things we could carry in the last season, need to be put to one side because there's a new wine to be poured into new wineskins. It's a new way of carrying things. There's a new way to travel. There's a new way to hold on to everything that God has for us in this new era. Not patching up, not old ways of carrying things. There's a new power, a new resurrection power. Jesus ushered in a new era and the religious people missed out on the power because they applied themselves the wrong way. Can't apply what Jesus did for us as that patch on our old life and, and hope by applying him that way that he'll make a difference. And neither can we expect our past way of functioning to hold the new era. Jesus wants to pour out a new wine for a new era into our life. It's a, there's a new era application that helps us to take hold and walk in the, the power, the, the new normal of the normal to be powerful in this season. It really is like when you're preparing to move, just like I said before, I, I know Wayne and Hannah have just been through this just last week, uh, just last weekend, uh, they prepared to move, and I can imagine this is probably what the house looked like at some stage, uh, probably like a, a period of time, there was things being put away, uh, things being packed up, and there's a few things that, in, in applying yourself to the new era, they're very, very similar. The first thing is, is uh, where you're going is new. This is the first important thing, is where you're going to is new. It's new. Everything about it is new. The Word of God, as we had prophesied by Pastor Soph, is we've never been this way before. So, so throw off your old thinking. Throw off all of 
all the old thinking way of doing things. Throw off all the old stuff. Don't worry that you're going to lose out of anything. Of the, oh, because everything we're stepping into is new. Everything about it is, is, is new. So establishing that is, is incredibly important that where we're going is new. Because that, that then esta- helps us establish the priorities of what we need to take with us. It, the second thing is you need to assess what you have. And when you get things into boxes, it's, it's amazing. I, I did this exercise yesterday as, just as I was going through my notes and working through the last p- sort of part of my preparation for this. I, I went to our filing cabinet. This is a filing cabinet that we've had with us since Australia. We moved over from Australia nearly eight years ago. And I just thought just as the exercise, I'll go through the process of having a look at the filing cabinet. It's a bit of a mess, I'll be honest. Uh, there's, but as I'm going through the filing cabinet, knowing full well that we'd only just done a bit of a clean out in that filing cabinet before we moved to Manchester, because uh, it was quite heavy, there was lots of documents in there. I'm leafing through and just going through again and assessing what we have. I, 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 found, some, uh, I found some old warranty booklets of things that we haven't had for 20 years. I, I found warranty booklets for things we got given as wedding gifts. So I'm putting them all to one side. I, 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 found, I found documents of things we purchased for a house that we built back in Newcastle in Australia that we're still carrying around. I'm finding all of these old, uh, old um, files of some ministry stuff that, that happened ages and ages ago. I'm looking through I'm, and I'm making this pile of stuff. Some things are just scribbles on bits of paper that for some reason at some stage along the journey we thought we're going to need this. We need to hang on to this. Uh, it's important. Who, who knows that this Breville electric wok thing that we don't have anymore or this toasty machine or this blender or this digital camera that we once bought, you never know when we might need it. Now you take all of this stuff. If you don't assess what you have, then you, you carry burden that you don't necessarily need to carry into a new era. There's some things that you need to assess. You see... Not everything, the truth is not everything you've accumulated is going to be appropriate in the new era. Time for a bit of a, a, bit of a clear out. There's some things you need to throw away, like, like I did yesterday. I actually went, it, it inspired me in just a moment of the time. It, I got, piled everything up out of the filing cabinet that I had. There's a huge wad of things that were just superfluous to our future. It's a good word, superfluous. So I threw that in the, in the recycling bin and I went up to my cupboard and I thought, I'll go through my cupboard. I'll have a look at some clothes, have a look at some shoes, some things I haven't worn for ages, but I've got them there just in case. I lose weight and I can fit into them again. In previous seasons where I've convinced myself, you know what, it wouldn't take much for me to do that little bit of exercise and I could fit into that shirt again. It doesn't matter that the shirt is like old. And I went through the cupboard and I looked at some clothes and said, there was, there was some things in the bottom of the, the drawer. You know the bottom and the back of the drawer, the stuff that you fold up and you put right at the back because you know you never wear it, but it's kind of got old memories attached. <laughs> you know that stuff? It's kind of like if you put it on, it's the stuff, guys, you know, the stuff that you put on. It's got all the memories, great old memories of the past. And it's a bit dusty and it's a bit moth-eaten and that kind of thing. And when you put it on, the wife says, what are you wearing that for? You're not going out of the house in that. That kind of stuff. The stuff that you're allowed to do the painting with or, or wax the car with, but you're not allowed to wear. But you keep it because it holds some memories of the past and you can't quite let go of it. I went out, there's some things we just need to throw away. They, they, they really serve no purpose in the new way. There's some things we need to give away. You, you go off to the charity shop. We've, we've done that a number of times as we step in a new area. You go off to the charity shop because there's some things you just need to give away. Just need to be generous with you. Don't throw them in the bin. Someone else, as you give them away in your generosity, they're actually going to be a blessing to someone else as you give them away. There's a stepping into the new era of stuff that you're going to give away, that you're going to travel light with, that actually is, it does nothing for you and it doesn't belong in your future, but it could just be something that blesses other people as you're generous in giving it away. There's some things you need to sell. There's things you need to get rid of and, and sell up, there's some, some furniture that's not going to suit the new. There, there's some stuff, it's, it's a bit too big, it's a bit too small, it's, a bit, it's the wrong color, it's the wrong style, it represents everything of the old that you just need to sell up and commit to buying new for a new season. 
There's also some things you've got to protect. There's some things that as you go through the assessing, you've got to protect. You've got to, you've got to get out the bubble wrap and not get too distracted by... You get distracted with that? I love it. And then you get on the ground, you jump on it a bit. And you give it to the kids and you never get it back. There's some things you need to protect. You need to make sure they're in a sturdy box. There's some things you need to, to stick fragile on. You need to, to box up and protect because they, they need to go into the next season, but they need to go into the next season whole. Because in a, in a season of transition, there's some things that can get damaged. There's some things that can get broken if you don't protect them for the new era in the journey that you've got to make. And even though it might be a short journey, you'll be amazed just in a short transition how many things can get broken if you're not careful. Some things you need to protect for the journey ahead. You need to be careful in the transition because there's some things at stake. There's some aspects of your heart you need to protect and be careful with. There's aspects of your mind and your thinking that you need to just guard and protect. In the Because there's, there's plenty of things attacking that have the opportunity to fall off the back of the truck if you're not careful on the way to. Some mindsets, some, some thinking, some, some heart issues. There's... There's a language you need to protect. There's a faith language in this season. You need to wrap up in bubble wrap. You need to box up and put fragile on. There's a way of speaking in faith in the transition that you need to be careful with because it, it very easily gets broken. It gets offended. It, get, it gets out of shape. It, 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 it starts to, to tinkle in the box. You know when you've got the fragile stuff on the glasses and you get there and you give it a little wiggle when you get to the new place and it's kind of rattling around. You don't want to open up the box because you just know you just know it's had a bit of a rough journey. Very similar to how we move it. And, and the important thing, when you get to your new house and you, you get into that rush where you know everything's there and you're ready to start unpacking. Uh, I like that bit. You've kind of you got to get all the, all the furniture. You've got to find out where it... You've done a bit of a, a, a recce mission beforehand to kind of look at where the telly's going to go, where the furniture's going to go, who's going to have the different bedrooms. And, and that's a big thing when you've got teenage kids and you go to a new home because it's like first dibs on the on the bedroom that's the best bedroom. And, and so you don't know where the beds go and where the large pieces of furniture go and all that kind of stuff. But it's important that you make room for the important things first. You don't go in and start to unpack and start to grab all of the little knickknacks and the little hanger things on the wall and, and all that kind of stuff and start hanging that up first before you've got the fridge in place and the cooker and the, and the sofas and all the big stuff. You need to prioritize the big things first and make room first to get all those important things in place. Because you can quite easily in a new era just clutter the place up with the unimportant. And, and then the whole new thing just looks like the old thing. This new normal, the normal to be powerful. The resurrection power, it's not a patch up job on your life, it's a brand new life. It's not an accumulation of all the the garbage of the previous eras that make you feel good and feel comfortable about being in this space that there's a familiarity still around. It's a whole new era. It's not just a behavioral or geographical shift for you where you take all of your old junk into the new place, that moth-eaten, dusty old chair that you just have to have. All of the old, I've got a cellar at the moment that is just, begging me to go down and sort it out because it's got stuff in there that I don't even, don't even know I've got. I lent out some camping gear to some guys in the church just over the last few months and I'm going through some of the stuff. I'm just thinking, I don't even know of, I don't even know I had that. I don't even know what that does. But you, if the new era is not something just to be cluttered up with all the old garbage, it's an opportunity to function in a resurrection power, to have everything in place, because I guarantee you, human nature is it's going to have, you're going to have your clutter challenges in the new era anyway. You don't want to start from the place of having it already cluttered from the very beginning. If the team can come, that would be great. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. I love this. I love this declaration that comes out of this passage. It says, but, ever, but whatever were gains to me now, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. Huh. So it's not even talking about the bad stuff of previous years, it's talking about all the good stuff. 
all of the things that went well, all the things that I loved, all the things that were successes, all of the things that I feel like a part of who I am. I, can, I consider them loss now for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss, everything a loss. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection. I wanna know Christ. I wanna know Christ. It's my new era declaration. Jesus, I wanna know you. I wanna know you. I wanna know the power of your resurrection. I wanna walk in your, your resurrection power. I wanna walk in the newness that comes. I don't want a, a patch up job, but I'm not looking to try to carry anything in the old ways. I, I want the newness of the new era, I want the newness, I want the normal of the power that you've given me to walk in. I wanna know you, Christ. Yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Jesus Christ took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't die for you and rise again. He just fix you up. Resurrection power is a complete new life transformation. Not in our own strength, not in our own doing, not just forming some new habits. It's a whole new transformation work that's only in His power, in His resurrection power. We just have to choose if we're going to be more loyal to the past than we're going to be loyal to the new normal of Jesus Christ's resurrection power. Because sometimes we give our loyalty to all the things of the past. Sometimes that loyalty, we give loyalty to all the hurts and the pains and the offences. We give so much time and so much credit to all the things that went wrong in the past that we're more loyal to those feelings than we are loyal to the, the new normal of walking in resurrection power. Sometimes we give more loyalty to the way things were done and the, the practices and the behaviours and the successes and the pride, positioning and everything else, we give more loyalty to that than we give to the resurrection work of Jesus Christ in a new era. What do we be loyal to as I was going through my clothes yesterday, looking at what there is I need to let go. I've got my, I found my old spray jacket that I wore when I worked in television. I worked in television as a producer and given all sorts of uniform and I use this on wet days and protect you from the, the rain a bit. Not that it rains that much in Australia, but in the rain a bit, and I, I looked at it, I thought, why do I still have that? There is absolutely no application for this thing. I've got new jackets, I've got new spray coats, and they're far more appropriate for English weather. This is way too thin. This is, this is keeping the water off, but it ain't doing anything else. And I thought, you know what? I need, I need, to, I need to give this to Julian, because it's a spray jacket that might, not that you're gonna wear it, but he can put it with the A-team's cupboard stuff that, you know what, it might be something that will bless someone out in the streets one night in the rain, keep the, the wet off their clothes and it might bless them. But you know what, it's not part of my new era. It represents a, a time of where I worked in my past that was awesome and I loved and great things happened, but I don't need it. It's not part of my future. I need to let go of it because I need to make space for the new stuff. I, I don't know whether I, this, this is actually a Bristol City football shirt. And uh, I got this when we, we lived in Bristol for six and a half years. And you know what, I, I, does anyone want this? Again, we're going to A-teams. 
Now, you see, in doing that, see, I'm in Manchester. It's my new era that God's called us to and brought us into. And you know what, it's not about, I'm not discrediting the past. I'm not being disloyal to the past, I'm being loyal to the new era. I'm not, I'm not trying to make a villain of the past. It, it was awesome and it was fantastic and I loved it and there's so many great memories, but I need to be loyal to it. What am I gonna be more? I'm gonna be more loyal to that stuff. That's just a great memory. Am I gonna be loyal to the resurrection work and power of Jesus Christ in this new era to make all things new? To bring about all things new. Because in my loyalty, I can hold on thinking those days are gone and they're never coming back. They're never gonna be quite as good as what they were. But no, 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 I'm loyal. First and foremost, to my faith in Jesus Christ and the new era that He's called me into. What do you need to... What do you need to get rid of? What do you need to let go of? In moving forward, it's sometimes easier said than done. Sometimes a lot easier said than done in letting go of the past. It's powerful victory found in an act of surrender to Jesus Christ. You see, it's not mustering up enough strength or courage or getting enough therapy done that you can let go of those things. It's an act of surrender to Jesus Christ. It's just an opportunity to go, Jesus, I'm yours. Everything that you want of me, want to use me for, everything about this new era I give myself to, everything that you are. Giving up the past, good and bad, and committing to paying a new price for a new era. You see, that can look sometimes, if you even look at the, the moving analogy, selling up everything and putting that money, you might think, oh, well, that, that's not gonna pay for everything that I need to buy new stuff. I'm not going to get the kind of money that I need out of selling the old stuff to get the new stuff. But the, the reality of it is, is there's, a, there's a new price to be paid in a new era for the new. And we need to be prepared to pay that price in the new era for the new stuff. It's a price that they paid for the old stuff and there's a journey that you, it's, it's not going to pay for. The stuff that happened and the price you paid in the old, it's not going to do the distance. Take what you can get for it and what's good about it and you bring it to and you make it part of, but there's a whole new price to be paid for the new. I tell you what, the paying the price for the new, paying the price for the new era costs far less than selling out the new era with old baggage. It'll cost you a lot more. It'll cost you a heck of a lot more taking old bag baggage into a new era and completely selling it out. It's a faith journey of saying, God, everything you have for me has been made new. Every day, God, I've been made new in you. It's time to live in the new, powerful, normal. I want the team just to sing a song and we're gonna worship together in this. And then I, I wanna lead some of us in a prayer after this. But I want you to just spend some time in this, in this worship, the words of this song. Just looking at what you need to throw away, the hurt, the offense, the bad attitudes, the disappointments of the old era. Things you need to give away, the past victories, the hard earned wisdom, and even some of the successes that you just need to give away. Look at the things you need to sell off, your preferences, your old methods, your comforts, that you just need to sell off. Look at the things you need to protect your mind, your faith language for the journey ahead. Just as we sing these words, worship together. You lead us, team.